and welcome to my workshop. This week I'm devoting this video to Atcam, Mac 3, NAC Studio, and we're actually going to make a part on my CNC router as well. I've had so many people write in to me and I, I suppose they don't sort of understand the relationship between Atcam and these management programs. So uh, I'm going to go right back to basics and I will show you how to cut a simple pocket, uh, which I'm actually going to do in this piece of aluminium. How to write the program, how to save the program, how to transfer the program in, both into uh, Mac 3 and NC Studio. And uh, you'll see that these both programs do exactly the same job. They administer or they tell the CNC machine exactly what to do, when to do it and how to do it. Um, make a cut that is. Um, so, as you can see, and I will tell you, that although Mac 3 is very colourful, and I use it myself, NC Studio is technically, I suppose, and graphically, the leader, I suppose, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. Although I do, I, I do prefer Mac 3. I'm sort of edging towards NC Studio as well. So I'll show you both the programs um, and the AppCam program, how to use it, and uh, then we will quickly cut a, a part on the CNC router. Okay. So the first thing we'll do is uh, we'll open. At Cam Express 2015 up, and uh, this is the the opening screen. Uh, over this side, uh, if you um, press on any of these and you're connected to the internet um, with the whatever computer you're using this on, um, you can go to At Cam and download uh, these uh, individual modules um, at extra cost. Um, so, on this side, what we're going to do, uh, uh, what actually shows you is the last four files or uh, programs that you've been working with, so you can uh, go into them if you, if you wish. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to open up a new model, we're going to start a new job. Um, now, so this little dialog box. Um, so you can change these to suit any dimensions of material or, or job that you are actually going to do. Now what I normally do in this sort of case, um, we are going to have, right. so what this represents is that square there. So what we're going to do is we're going to machine a pocket out in there for the, uh, the ball nut to go into. Uh, in actual fact, we're going to machine both sides, that side and that side. Um, but we're just going to consider ourselves with doing the program for doing this pocket. Just a simple pocket. So the dimensions um, in X, Y, okay, um, Y that direction, X this direction, um, is I've already preset it at 50 millimeters. Uh, you can um, at, the, at any point uh, when you start the, your job, you can either work in inches, imperial, or metric. I prefer to work in metric, so it's um, 50, 50 millimeters by 50 millimeters, which is two inches by two inches. Uh, this here, look, we can leave this alone. You only really use the uh, resolution uh, slider. If you're doing a 3D um, machining job, as in a figurine or or something like that, an artistic type piece of so work, so we'll just leave it at the uh, recommended settings there. So then we press OK, which takes us into the CAD CAM screen. If you require um, measuring or guidelines, you just come up here to the see there's a ruler here. There's a ruler down on this side, 
so you just come here hold down and you can you can pull a line down to what wherever you want to put it uh, and there's many lines in from both sides as you top or side okay um, now I have snap uh, turned on in this program so what I need to do is come over here and down this side here we have up the top is um, should we say manipulating tools okay we'll go into that in more detail uh, on later videos but uh, this one particular one here this is the select tool uh, you'll use that one more than anything um, these two here sorry three here this is a measuring tool this is a painting tool um, or uh, this is a, a drawing tool in color because this this actual program uh, can should we say dif differentiate uh, between one object and another object just by color okay so now down here this is the normal drawing tools uh, this is a continuous line, a uh, line in any direction, straight line, uh, squares or rectangles, um, circles, um, polygons, and uh, arcs. Those are the main ones that you, you use. From those you can draw anything. And of course here, this is a text, uh, brings up a text dialog box. Um, Right, so we're going to start. We're just going to. Um, um, we want the circle. That's the only one we're going to use, actually. I'm going to come here to roughly to the middle of the material. And incidentally, the opening screen, you would have noticed. Um, I can actually go back to the opening screen. Just to show you, you at any time, you can change where you want the tool to start the program or the zero point of the program at the moment it's set into the middle of the material you see it, I've got a zero here and a zero here okay so if you want to alter the start of the program from being in the center to this bottom corner for instance you go up here to this and it says set model size and you can alter it here so we will alter it there and we'll click OK and you'll notice that the now the zero of the measuring toolbar is now here and here which indicates that the start of the program is down in this bottom uh, left corner but uh, I want to start in the center of the material and there we go we're, we're set now back in the center of the material We've chosen a circle, we want to make a circle. We come into the middle here, and if, if you notice, this is now highlighted that, oh, it's in the middle, it's snapped to the middle of the material. So you just hold the lead left mouse down, and start to draw, then release it. Then you go over to this dialog box, okay? And the first window here, um, that is actually telling you that that circle in relation to the material is set x0 y0 in other words right in the center of the material which is where we want it if we wanted to alter it we wanted to move it left right up down put it somewhere else in there we can just by filling in that uh, first part of that dialog box um, the diameter oh I'm going to check the diameter so, we're going to cut the pocket in this to fit this, this ball nut. Now that this ball nut is very accurately ground. Um, 27.97. So that's actually 28. Um, so I want a little bit of clearance because I don't want to uh, have to to you know sort of mess around fettling to try and get it in um, so I wanted a sort of a not exactly a tight fit so up in this dialog box up here it says set diameter 
Uh, so I want this diameter to be 28.15. Now I know that will give me enough clearance to be able to fit that in without uh, any difficulty and a little tiny, tiny bit of movement. Uh, so that's absolutely fine. Okay, so then we press create and there it is. It's there. It's as simple as that. That's where we want to put our pocket. Over well, here now, press the select button uh, and it gets rid of that window. And then you come up here and press toolpaths, which brings this dialog box up here, down here. And what we want to do, we want to do a uh, two-dimensional tool pad okay. clearance. That one. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to say, okay, start off depth is zero. The zero of the material is the top surface. Within ArtCam, there is occasions where you want to make the zero um, below the surface of the material. Uh, we will go into that in further uh, videos. I want the finish depth to be uh, 25. Now the reason for that is, and the, re <laughs> the reason I know that tool will cut down uh, about 27 millimeters. Okay, if you have the six millimeter, we're going to use a six millimeter tool. Um, if you have it protruding out any further than that from the chuck, um, it does start to get a little bit of tool chatter. So, what I'm doing is I'm going to machine down 25 millimeter this side, turn it over 25 millimeter that side, so there'll be a hole all the way through. Okay, so finish depth 25 millimeter. Uh, machine safe 10 millimeter over the material. That's fine. Now then, we're going to add a tool, add a cutter, and it's going to be an M mil, six millimeter, and just brings up a rough description of the 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 general settings that uh, the, the creator, that ArtCam have put in, in general settings. Um, and this is set for aluminium. Uh, however, depending on what machine you're going to run it in, um, obviously you need to manipulate these uh, settings. So we're going to select that. And we're going to go into this dialog box. Now, now these are those settings. So step over 1.8. We can actually go to two millimeters here. So it's 2.0. Uh, step down. Now, I, in aluminium, I like to go uh, zero. I normally do 0 0.5. I can do 0 0.6 quite safely. Feed rate, 20 millimeters a second. That is okay because I can start, I'm, I'm using Mark III. Uh, I can start that off at 10%, start to do the cut, then ramp it up to 100% uh, if, if, you know, I, I wish to. Uh, six millimeters per second, that's, I'm leaving that as it is. Um, I can leave the spindle speed setting as it is my spindle is not controlled by mag 3 i control that um, by the vfd controller itself on the machine so okay the next um thing we need to do is decide whether we want to machine back and forth back and forth back and forth this way or offset where it will come down into the middle and go around and around and around and, around and work its way out that's the one i always use so we'll select that uh, climb milling, you always get a better finish with climb milling. In actual fact, um, 
in my next video where I'm actually uh, where I uh, show you uh, machining this, I'll show you the difference between Klein milling and uh, traditional <laughs> conventional milling, um, and you'll see for yourself that it's uh, a far better finish with Klein milling. Um, ramp moves. In other words, I want the tool to ramp down in. Like it'll sort of go like this into the material, not straight in. Uh, yes, I like to use uh, ramp moves. Uh, this particular case, this is all set OK. Uh, maximum ramp angle, um, length, and it's all set absolutely fine. Material setup. OK, so we're going to tell it that it's 25 millimeter. I know this is 50 millimeters, but I'm, don't forget we're going to machine 25 millimeters down this side, turn it over, and 25 millimeters from this side. So I'll just tell the program that it's 25 millimeters. And model position, top. Zero of the material on the top, and this is all okay. That's exactly what I want. And now you just name the program, uh, and I abbreviate everything. And now at uh, this point, um, you just press calculate, and there it is. So we can get rid of that. Now you can come to the 3D, so you can change between. 2D, which is this, which is like the CAD side of it, uh, and go to the 3D modeling side of it, and there it is. Now, if you come up here, you can go to this like this little world, press on that, and you can then toggle this around to any position that you want. So what we're going to do now is we're going to simulate the tool pass and let all tool pass up here. There we go. There it is. It will simulate that. Okay, so there it is. For the hole all the way through. So. The next thing we need to do is to um, save these toolpaths, or this toolpath now, to a um, memory save toolpaths. You see this dialog box, save toolpaths, and it's there it is there, that's the toolpath, that's what we named it. So now, we come here, and uh, we need to browse where to send it to. So it's, um, let me see, storage stick here, 6 millimeter E mil. Just very short, abbreviated to say, well, it's a pocket and it's uh, machined with a 6 mil end mil. And press, oh, another thing here too. You can save it in many different codes. We are saving it in general G code in millimeters, in metric. You see down here, we can save it in a <laughs> many, many different types of codes for different types of machines. But we are this one here. Uh, that's generally what Mac 3 understands. Uh, it just goes to prove that um, this particular program, um, Atcam Express, can suit pretty well every machine out there. So there you go. And save. And it's as quick as that. Done. Okay, so now we're going to zero the work. Um, I pr actually prefer uh, for ease I suppose, uh, to use these radio keyboards um, really as a, as a, as a pendant, um, the next best thing, I, 
I do have a pendant, but it's not, uh, it doesn't work with Mac 3. So um, we'll use this, and uh, virtually what we do is use the arrows left, right, uh, up and down to maneuver X and Y, and the Z is page up, page down. So we'll do that right now. And incidentally, if you press shift and then whatever corresponding arrow, uh, it will take it to rapid feed. Uh, slow feed is that which is very slow. Rapid feed is shift and so moves quite quickly. Uh, actually, the rapid feed for this particular machine is set at um, 2,000 millimeters per minute. So. Uh, It'll get along. It's looking pretty good there. Okay, X and Y is perfect. So what you do then, I'll just uh, zoom back out and show you in my okay, three, in my three you just get the mouse and you come up here and you just click X and Y and press regen. So it's good practice. Now what we will do is um, take that tool out and we'll we'll put the cutter in that we're going to use and we'll do the or we'll zero the Z. Okay, this is uh, a six millimeter two flute uh, cutter that we're going to use to do the whole job. And uh, the type of um, tool, uh, tool holder that uh, is used by these machines is called a collet chuck. And we'll just change the, the tool on a collet chuck now. So we'll raise it up. Okay, so to change the tool on a collet chuck, I'm going to hold the shaft with one spanner. Oh, get the right end. And then undo that. Pull that one out. And put this one in. And this is a six millimeter collet in there at the moment. I'll just pick another collet and show you what a collet looks like. So you don't have to over tighten it, just firm. And that was the pointy tool that we, that's an engraving tool by the way. And I'll just get a collet. Okay, uh, now there's a collet. That's a collet. This is a 12 millimeter collet. And this is a 12 millimeter three flute end mill that I sometimes use. So that fits inside there like that. So that's what's in there. That's the arrangement that's inside. Okay, the next job we're going to do, as I say, is we're going to set the Z height uh, on that tool. And to do that, we're going to do it with a piece of paper. Now, a piece of paper is quite thin. In fact, it's approximately, if you can read that, one thousandth of an inch. And incidentally, we're going to change that to millimetres. That is 0 0.03 of a millimeter. So that's one thousandth of an inch. So this machine will actually machine to, to close to one thousandth of an inch. Uh, that's its tolerance. That's what it will do. It will close to it. It's just a little bit over, I think. Uh, maybe 1.25. Of a third, so it's <laughs> a close to a third. So uh, I'll show you how we're going to do that now. Okay. So what we do? Well, first of all, look. I just put a center pot there, and so that's a bit of risen material, uh, and that's going to take it up about five thou. So I'm going to take it slightly off to one side, like. Like that. And then we're going to fetch a tool down. Okay. I'm going to put our piece of paper underneath there. 
I am going to catch out it one hand and then bring, oh, there you are. It's just grabbed it there. Just, just grabbed it. So take it back up again. See? And just move it. There you go. Just grabbed it. That is bang on. So what you do then is just press the Z zero and that's it, it's done. Okay, having got all our zeros all correct now, I'll just take this uh, tool off the material and we're going to um, start the spindle up. Incidentally, this is known as a spindle or it's a rotor head. Uh, you'll hear, hear it being called both of those. So, okay, we'll start the spindle up now. Uh, and I know it's running at approximately 18,000 RPM, which is about right for, for doing this job. And uh, we'll run it at 30% of, um, of the program that was written. Uh, so I like to run it nice and slow to start off and then ramp it up when we're going in for the, the main cut and um, run it at 100%. So that's what we'll do now. So this is how we reduce the feed rate or the program run rate down to about 30%. So you go on here where it says feed rate and just click away on this. So it comes down to about 30%. And um, then I'll start the spindle up. Okay, we're just over half an inch into it now. So there's half of it done, that's 25 mil uh, deep, and you'll notice this, uh, this is the one I started to do, um, and of course I did it in the wrong area, but by the time I realised it, uh, I'd gone down uh, eight and a half millimetre, and I'd stopped the programme, and I thought, well, I've been looking for a logo. Well, that's the start of a logo that I've got in mind. So, uh, just by accident, I stumbled across um, a logo. Because I've always been one trying to get a, a round hole in a square. <laughs> put, put a round hole in a square hole, or vice versa. So, um, I quite like that. So. I actually just caught it in time. There's still uh, like three millimeter thickness of wall there. It really doesn't matter, but I, I think I'm going to play around with that idea and to, to make a company logo. Just that that idea there. I quite like it. Okay, so on with the other side now. So there you go. What a perfect fit. And of course this is the part that um, eventually will be mounted 
to our z axis up here. Um, quite a bit of finishing to do on this yet. Like, um, there's six uh, bolt holes here. Actually, I'm only going to use probably four. Um, so they've got to be drilled and tapped uh, in the top here. I'm probably going to uh, machine these corners at a nice 45 degree angle off. Um, that one, that one, that one, and that back one there. Um, I want to make it sort of geometrically nice. Um, and I've got four mounting holes to be put on this surface here, which will meet up with this one here. Um, so, there you go. Um, that's how to machine it. Well, first of all, in ATCAM, how to draw up and make the tool paths. Which is very easy, it's just a, just put in a just little bit of information in the conversationals uh, in ATCAM and it will it'll do the rest. Um, and of course that's just a very simple uh, operation for ATCAM. It will do far, far complex things than that. Uh, as you'll see uh, in other videos that I, I've uh, got up. Um, but that's a simple job. Pocket write the code and then put the code into Mac 3 in this case. I think I, I did a dummy run on um, NC Studio as well and you can see the difference between the two programs that administer it to the machine. Uh, currently I'm using Mac 3 on the um, CNC mill. I will probably uh, link this up to NC Studio and I will swap it over and run it on Mac 3 to show you the difference. Uh, there is actually no difference to the machine, it doesn't know. Uh, it just receives the impulses and uh, reacts accordingly. Um, so there you go, that's it for another video and uh, I hope you've liked what you've seen. I hope it's been informative for you and um, please, uh, if you have, press like, subscribe to my channel, that is a very good thing, <laughs> um, or go to my YouTube channel by pressing the little red box down there somewhere, and uh, yeah, that will take you to my YouTube channel, and um, there's 140 videos now, of which I think this is number 140, and I hope to see you here again, um, and actually I hope to finish this and have it up and running. Uh, before I have to go back to China, I was notified this morning that um, I'm required there in a week and a half. So I hope I can get get all this up and running. And um, anyway, I'll see you next time. Bye for now.